Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Today's video is on, yes, no other but slave training. And not just slave training, but specifically behavioral changes. Or how to change the behavior of a or your slave. So I have actually had quite a few people express to me that they don't think it's possible to change these behaviors. Some people say there's no way that you can change a person. A person's set in their ways and it's too late. They're an adult. Blah, blah, blah. Well, I'm not saying that it's possible for everybody. I'm sure there's a lot of people that can never change and never do and never will. But there are a lot of people that can and do change. And one way to do it is through slave training. If you are a dominant and a submissive, it requires time, effort, energy, both of you really have to be dedicated to it, be very devoted to doing this slave training. It is not easy. It requires a lot from both of you, but it is well worth it, at least to me. Disclaimer, when I talk about my opinions, these are just for me, you know, I'm not telling anybody how to live their life or what to do. I'm just talking about myself. It's been worth it. And um, it it's work, but it's also a lot of fun along the way. It is a lot of fun. So keeping that in mind, some of us do find it enjoyable um there are some behaviors that masters dominance want changed from a slave from their slave they want these behaviors changed because they desire the change or they feel that a change is needed or it's better suited for that dominant. Uh, sometimes it could be because certain behaviors are really not very conducive to their, to them, or to the relationship or to the master or the dominant. Um, whatever it may be, slave training does help with a lot of that because it gives you discipline. It gives you structure. At least to me, it has given me structure, rules. That's been a way for me to change my behaviors that were not serving me, that were not serving my master. Rules. Because rules have actually given me structure. And I was one of those people that was very, very unruly. I'm not saying that that I'm um, at the place that both my master and myself want to be in, or that we ideally the place that we want to be in is anywhere even close or nearby it's not we still put in a lot we still put in a lot of work and um but definitely there's been tremendous changes when he first met me i was so unruly and such a just well <laughs> there are no words and now i see how my behaviors have changed so much and for the better. 
Uh, what has worked for me has been putting putting a lot of my effort into the slave training. You really have to be devoted to it. You really have to take it seriously. Both of you do. It can't just be a fly by night. I don't think it'll work if it's a fly by night. It has to be consistent. And it has to be something that you're both devoted to. It's not easy. For some people, it's easier and for others, it's harder. Um, like I said earlier, there's rules. There are rituals. All of this helps in slave training. Um, your master or your dominant, whatever, they can decide to give you rewards for some of your changed behavior um, or just in changing your behavior. You can be rewarded or you can be punished or both. And punishment is not always just corporal punishment. It's not always just the physical. There's different kinds of punishment. There's also mental, emotional, uh, psychological. There are different forms and um, punishment can be very tedious too. Such as things like writing down I will not blah, 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 do this again. And you have to write that down over and over like a thousand times. That's very tedious. And it's something that I would imagine a lot of people, most people don't want to do. So that is a form of punishment. Or taking a really, really cold shower. I know I hate the cold. Now, I haven't had to do that, but I have heard that other people that is a punishment that is given to them. But I haven't had to do that, thank God, because I cannot stand the cold. And um, yeah, so another thing is um, shock collars. Shock collars, well, I can't speak for anyone else, but for myself, that's something that helps. That's something that works in changing behaviors that are not conducive to me and to my master and to the relationship. So that's kind of, shock collars kind of remind me of Pavlov's dog. Like it's a kind of a training in that way where your brain is, um, that dog was, he would hear the bell ringing and he would already salivate just from hearing the bell ring. Now, those of you who don't know Pavlov's dog, just search it, Google it, and you'll see what I'm talking about. And that dog was really trained. It was kind of like going from A to B and you want the, the end result to be C. So that's how you do it through that training. We're going to start with this and this is going to lead to this so on and so on and um to me that's kind of how shock collars are they remind me of like Pavlov's dog but there are different ways it's like the person that you know wants to reach out to uh get some cookies from the cookie jar and somebody just smacks their hand each time that they do it that's one way of training the person learns that if they, they sneak their hand out to get the cookies in the jar, they're going to get smacked. So unless they like getting smacked, that, that'll that have an effect on them. But if they like getting smacked, then it won't. But if they don't, then yeah, they're not going to want to get those cookies from the cookie jar. But there are different, many different ways of um, training somebody. And getting those behaviors that you don't want to change. You can use a lot of mental, you can use a lot of mental stuff on them. Um, for me, I feel that with behavioral change, I mean, rewards are great and they do work for 
everybody's different, right? Every person is different, not just every slave, but every person is different. So I feel that you kind of have to know, get to know the person, the slave that you're dealing with and see what works best for them. It's also, it's also the dominant. It's not just both of you together. I mean, of course it is both of you together in this dynamic, but it's also each of you separately. How does each one of you work? And how does this come together? So like the mental may work on somebody and it may not work on somebody else. Also just kind of knowing, okay, if I do this, this is what's gonna happen to me because I already know it's it already has. My master has already done this, so these are the consequences. And you begin to learn that way. It's a lot of um, trial and error at first, but you begin to learn about each other. And that's super important between a master and a slave. It's super important just to even find out about yourself. Like even if you're a slave, you know, right now watching this, you may not even know everything that there is to know about yourself. And in this type of uh, scenario, this type of situation. So you may just be learning about yourself and what works. And uh, even if you're not in a master slave relationship, you know, you could um, just pay attention to yourself and see how you work. Then when you do find that dominant, you'll be that much more wiser. I, I didn't know, you know, what would work on me and it's taken me time uh, through trial and error. And now I see with me, it is a lot of the, like Pavlov's dog. Um, with me, it's not so much the rewards, but it's more of the consequences. So, uh, I will be getting into more topics and more in depth. I just have to, um, get my schedule right, but those are coming up pretty soon.